Hello, I'm Dave Rubenstein, Editor-in-Chief of SD Times, and I'm here at the DevOps Enterprise Summit in San Francisco with the co-founder of JFrog, uh, Shlomi ben Hayim. Good to see you. Great to see you. Great so, to be here. Uh, I had uh, done an interview with, uh, I guess, your other co-founder, uh, Fred, and we talked Fred about, Simon. Uh, Fred Simon, we talked about liquid software, <laughs> and uh, it, it got a lot of uptake from our readership. People were interested, and uh, I was hoping maybe you could just, uh, you know, tell the folks a little bit about uh, the vision of what it means to have liquid software. Yes, so first, it's, it's great to be here at the DevOps Enterprise Summit. And uh, speaking of uh, liquefying software, I, I see it all over the place. I was walking between the booth that the exhibition's on and, and I s ask myself what, uh, what we ask ourselves for the last seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the one big bold pain that DevOps is trying to solve? And I think that everybody agree now uh, we use it as our slogan for a long time, release fast or die. Everybody mm -hmm. speaks about speed. Everybody speaks about doing things fast and keep the quality. Right. And, um, and I think that the, 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 the generation of continuous integration that become continuous, de the continuous delivery and then DevOps and then Kubernetes goes to a place that people understand that the user experience mm -hmm. is not anymore the developers and the DevOps, it's the user experience right. is focusing on your battery. <laughs> you, we yeah. all get freaked out if, sure. if our battery <laughs> runs out. Your Wi-Fi, do you have Wi-Fi, yes or no? Right. And software updates. And this is what we call in J4 continuous update. And this is what Fred shared with you when right. he said liquefying software or what we call liquid software. Mm -hmm. In the world of uh, 2020, software update would be just flowing to your devices and, and your machines. Right. The end users will be devices that will manage us. We will be the consumers and software will be liquid. Mm. And, and I think that this is the main pain and maybe the, 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 the first goal that DevOps industry kind of uh, revolutionized. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it was an interesting concept when uh, Fred was explaining to me uh, uh, just uh, the flow of, of updates to, uh, and, and people won't even know they're happening, and they'll just turn on the machine today, and it you know, well, may look a little different than it did yesterday, have some different functionality than it did. But Well, I keep asking people if they know um, what Twitter version they use. Right. The answer is no. Do you know what Google Chrome uh, right. version you use? No, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever. Right. Um, and therefore, um, we understand that this is where the world goes to. It's not just uh, mm -hmm. that the cloud triggered that. Right. This is really the new user experience. Versions right. are important in order to build software. It's right. not important for the user. Right. He just wants to have everything updated. Right. His car, his machine, his iPhone. I don't want to push my software update on iPhone to the end of the right. week right. and to reboot my, my, my phone. Mm -hmm. I want to have this cloud in my pocket right. updated. Now it's interesting because some, some companies still want to differentiate their software by giving them version names or numbers, so maybe it'll be version 2017 for the year or something like that. But now they're facing the issue of, well, when do we get to a point where, okay, now we'll call this the next version? if things are flowing so organically through the system and change is happening so rapidly, where do you stick the flag in the ground and say, okay, this is now the new version? You know, that's, I think, uh, an issue people are facing. Uh, what we see in JFOG, um, and, and we have 4,000 customers and 60,000 users, so, so I think that we start to see the change. Mm -hmm. Yes, it used to be um, also a business model. Right. You were buying Windows, 8 or mm -hmm. Windows 7 or Vista or, or sure. different version, it was per version. Right. And now I think that vendors and especially software vendors understand that they have to come with the functionality and the value and people will keep on updating the software right. and, and by the way, not people, machines and devices will right. update automatically the software. The version will not be right. the one thing that will promote it. Right. It's a, it's a good point. So I wanted to talk a little bit also about JFrog tooling and, and what it is you guys offer and how it helps people uh, you know, find this uh, faster speed of delivery. Yeah. 
so we, we started in 2008 with uh, our flagship product, Artifactory, um, mm -hmm. which became a standout in, in the world of binary management. This is uh, our universal solution for managing your binaries. Um, as, as we spoke uh, back then, Managing binaries sounds like uh, science fiction. You don't <laughs> manage your binaries, you just dump them somewhere. Yeah. And today, um, because of the metadata that comes with it and because of the need of automation and acceleration, you need to manage uh, binaries. Artifactory uh, become just an amazing product that serves a lot of customers and open source users. Mm -hmm. We support all packages, so we don't we, we see it as, as a mission to bring mm -hmm. binaries to everywhere and everyone. Right. Um, so if you use Python or C++ or Docker or RPM or Java uh, or .NET, mm -hmm. Artifactory will suit you well. That was how we started. And then we wanted to have uh, the next leap forward, as we say in JFrog, mm -hmm. uh, which is the distribution platform. Bintray is where you want to distribute binaries as binaries. Mm -hmm. You have GitHub to, to distribute code. Right. which is great when we use it ourselves, but you need Bintray in order to distribute binaries. And today on Bintray we have over two billion downloads a month wow. with some significant players including Cisco and VMware and Unity and uh, Netflix that are distributing uh, through Bintray. Again, a universal solution to distribute binaries as binaries. So if you take right. those two pieces together, the repository, the warehouse, the heart mm -hmm. of the life cycle and the database of DevOps mm -hmm. and the distribution platform, you understand that there is a layer on top of it that is missing. And this mm -hmm. is why we released last year JFrog X-Ray. Mm -hmm. uh, X-Ray is very unique security tool uh, because it's securing your binary flow. Uh, on one hand, it's getting all the metadata from Artifactory. On the other hand, it comes with a very rich uh, database of security vulnerability and license compliance. Mm -hmm. The combination of, the, of both of them provides something very unique in the market, which is a dependency graph, and this is why you need to use binaries and metadata, mm -hmm. that can not just give you an alarm about the vulnerability, but also tell you um, where are you impacted. And the impact analysis is what InfoSec guys need today. Mm -hmm. um, on top of this whole uh, binary machine, uh, we acquired a company last year, uh, CloudMunch, uh, which provide a DevOps insight together with JFrog Mission Control, which is the configuration tool. Mm -hmm. We will bring to the CIO for the first time an ROI insight of what DevOps is. Like everybody speaks about DevOps. Gartner and Forrester and you guys already mm -hmm. said that this is not the early adopter um, right. era. Okay. It's already there, mainstream. And I think that um, the next question would be from managers and CFOs will ask CIOs to provide them with the numbers and currently there is no tool in the market that will tell you this is the return on investment on what we did when we say we will release faster. Mm -hmm. And uh, next generation of CIOs will know how to ask the question and will demand the answers exactly. in analytics and not stories. Excellent. So this is our vision. This is how we are going to liquefy software, by the way. End to end, from your Git to your mm -hmm. Kubernetes, yeah. you will have the j pipe. I like the way you brought that back around to the liquid. Very thank good. you. Well <laughs> it's done. our vision. I hope right. I, I know how to do it. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you very much for being with us, Shlomi. Thank you, Dave. And uh, again, representing uh, JFrog. And uh, this is Dave Rubenstein uh, again. Until next time, so long.